I'm Dave Brown with Federal Resources, and we're at Guardian Center at Perry, Georgia, to talk about and <laughs> fuck. This is going to be a while, man. I'm Dave I'm sorry. Brown. I'm with the I don't know. Federal Resources. Why did you get a TV sorry. voice all of a sudden? I don't know. I could do that. Got a fucking game show voice. Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> to talk with Endeavor Robotics on their. I'm Dave Brown with Federal Resources, and we're here to talk. Fuck. Talk to Endeavor Robotics and their EOD robotic. Platforms. That was close, man. Fuck. Hey, y'all. I'm Dave Brown with Federal Resources. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, like that? Yeah. And we're here at Guardian Center in Perry, Georgia, to talk to Endeavor Robotics on their EOD robotic platforms. With me is Gary Stair from Endeavor Robotics. Gary, what have you brought out here for us today? Well, we brought our full family of systems. We brought four <laughs> robots, and Dave's going to laugh about it for 20 minutes. We have the 110 first look on this side over here. Actually, it's right behind me. Let me try it again. <laughs> We have the 110 first look, it's our five pound system. We have our SUG V310, which is a 25 pound system. Our 510 in the corner over here, which is a 68 pound system. And our Bohemoth, the 710 Cobra. All of them right now, are, except for the Cobra, are running on MPU5 radios. This gives the ability for mesh networking inside of a soldier system. The soldier is the same radio that the soldiers are carrying now into combat. It allows for data transfer, video transfer, and other communication services. And the radio is from Persistent Systems. Can you tell us a little bit about the new controllers that user are moving to? Uh, for example, everybody's used to the puck system on the 510 pack right. bots. So what Dave's holding here is our Rugon tablet that has the U-Point application on it. The U-Point application allows you to drive the 110, the 310, and the 510. Currently, the 710 system is not running on it, but we will have that up and running later this year, or early 2019. The MPU-5 radio has mesh capabilities built into it. On our chassis, they have the additional MPU-5 radio. So your operating system with the MPU-5 is a mesh node, and then also your robots are mesh nodes. So if you wanted to extra, or go around a building or just go out of sight, out of line of sight, you send one robot to that main point where you can see to your line of sight and then you can further your distance by sending another robot past that and then on and on and on. It's self-healing, the operator, the soldier, the, the civilian, any of them driving it, they'll be able to automatically mesh without having to change any settings. Now, can you talk a little bit about the SUG V310? It now has a 25 pound grip strength. Is that what they call it? Tensile strength? The arm, the manipulator, has the ability for 12.5 pounds of lift capability. Some of the new things with the PackBot, Gary will talk about. So right, so on the PackBot 510, it used to just be an EOD robot. And then, you know, that the engineers got into it and then it kind of morphed from there. It's the same chassis, same arm, but what we've done is upgraded, upgraded the internals, allow for CBRN capabilities. Why are you standing on a rock? Because it makes me more centered. We're running three sensors on it right now. We're using a UDR-14. How many sensors can you run? We can run five. Five sensors? Yes. And for this variant, it's just the LCD 3.3, the multi-ray 4 gas, and the UDR-14. Correct. For surveying. For surveying, correct. So you can also map out the area. If you get a, a hot spot while you're doing a survey, you can look on a map and it'll tell you exactly where it is. It'll give you your 10 digit grid coordinates of where it's at through GPS. Nice. I want to know a little bit about the Cobra. All right, the 710 Cobra, it weighs close to 500 pounds or right at 500 pounds. The uh, operating time is around 20 hours max. It has a lift capability of 390 pounds. It has a grip strength of 1100 pounds per square inch. EOD variant is going to have this system off the back so you can have your high back camera. It is not a pan and tilt, but it is a stationary wide angle camera. So you can see basically the whole chassis while you're driving through obstacles. Can you're, you take this arm off? You yeah. can take this arm off and put a rack for packs. Correct. Or you could pull the arm gear. off if you wanted to be able to hold, haul gear up and down range. You pull the arm off and we have a basket that goes on there. Or you could fashion something out of uh, necessity. So it has a rear camera, a front chassis camera, has your turret camera. In this system with the dual pans, it has a camera here. And then it also has a top camera for your uh, gripper. Everybody loves to say turret, don't yes. they? Yes. All of our systems are built 
to, for expansion. Any of the other disruptors or anything like that can be uh, adapted to the robot at any time. So eventually you're going to see in a later series the MRAD, the multi-robotic... <laughs> the multi What's the MRAD stand for? Multi-shot robotic EOD disruptor. Fuck. So eventually you're going to see the multi-shot robotic EOD disruptor on this. It basically is a one-chamber sh one shot pan with eight different rounds. You could shoot seven water shots or load eight different rounds from E-blank to high velocity, any combination, and fire on the go. So as you're driving your robot, you could actually load around whatever your downrange target might be. We have fired the APOBs off of it, which is a chem ring system for minefield clearing on smaller scales. We fired the 240 machine gun off of it with the precision remote system. The T360, Dave, just led you right into it with T3, nothing. T360. T360. I don't know what all right, T360 that's right. is. <laughs> all right. The fucking bazooka. We've used it in SMET testing. We've used it for carrying a weapon station. And this weapon station made by Precision Remotes carried the 240 Bravo on it. We were able to test that in 2013. The APOB system, which is a smaller minefield clearing charge, shoots a rocket down range and has a line of explosives off it from Kemring. Like a small Miklik. It's a small Miklik. Nice. Backpackable. Awesome. So, Gary, let's talk about my face. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> I'm fucking freezing. <laughs> I got snot driven off my motherfucking nose. So, Gary, let's talk about the 110, one of my personal favorites because it's so small and it's a perfect answer for making entry into a window or on a roof. If you're doing a hard hit on a building, you could throw it in a window and get a really quick recce of what's in there. If there's bad guys in there, bunker down or what have you. And it's also an excellent subterranean piece of gear. It also works off the U-point application with the persistent radios. So it is meshable and can you be used as a repeater. So if I'm going down range with a SUG V, fuck. So if I'm going down range with a SUG V and I have one of these in my day pack, I could run this out down to the corner of a building and then further on use it to take my SUG V around the rest of the way of the building. If you say you threw it onto a, the roof of a building or into a, into a window, if the robot is upside down, your antenna is gonna be underneath the robot at that point. When after 15 or so seconds, the robot will self right to make sure your antenna is straight up in the air. It'll bring your flippers back in so you're at the throwing position when, uh, when you're inside the room. So with four cameras on it, there's a camera on the front, back, left, and right. They are all zoom cameras. They have IR and white light capability. The controller will give you a great feedback. You can also record video and take pictures. And remember kids, never underestimate a good free throw on a game of horse. I'm out.